headed to the Big Apple, New York City, for the Innovative Schools Conference. Denver International Airport has undergone a series of renovations that kind of improve the flow through security and take you directly down to the trains and into the terminal faster than it has before. Right in the back of the plane, I head to LaGuardia Airport on a United flight, heading out of Denver International Airport. Tromping into the plane, always nice to have boarding group too, so I get lots of bin space. Although, I have to say, these planes, they don't really have the most foot space anymore. Taking a cab from LaGuardia, I head to my room, the Marriott Marquis in Times Square. It's a nice, usable hotel in the center of town. All right, room view commence. Bathroom, couch, two beds, and view of something. This will be my home for six nights. Cool. Not wanting to waste anything on my first day, I head for a couple hours at the MoMA, the Modern Museum of Art in New York City, to see works by the artist Matisse. The galleries are kind of getting full in midday, and you should see everybody's lining up to see Starry Night by Van Gogh, even though there's a couple other really nice Van Goghs in the same room. But it's always fun to visit this painting. It reminds me of a coffee shop I used to go to in Fort Collins. And then I spent the rest of the time kind of wandering around the galleries, enjoying myself at a nice pace, checking out some Monet's water lilies, The MoMA surprises with all sorts of interesting modern art. There's some Andy Warhol here. Also a little bit of Matisse when he was doing his cutout art. It's meant to be a swimming pool. One of the things I love about the MoMA is you never know what you're going to get. It's a very surprising gallery here with um, sculptures created out of upcycled stuffed animals sorted by color and kind of sewn together. Definitely a different piece of art, but somewhat intriguing. Um, I felt kind of bad for all of those children's old stuffies. This piece of work with these giant metal cubes always reminds me of the game Portal. Day, I wanted to get some more steps in, so I headed to Central Park. Had a nice little walk around Central Park and headed back um, to the neighborhood my hotel's in, and along 8th and 9th Avenue to see if I could find some restaurants. We ran across the Lincoln Center where we saw um, Don Quixote and Ballet a couple years ago. So I decided to stop into the hotel bar and have a little beverage before I went out. Enjoyed myself, had a Manhattan, watched the rain fall over Times Square out the windows and just kind of enjoy the scene. Relax in my first evening. Next morning got up, went to my conferences, and then after my conferences went for a run on the treadmill with a nice view of Times Square. Went out for some Chinese soup dumplings. Man, they were really good. And then kind of enjoyed the drizzle as I walked back home to the hotel to grab a night's sleep. Getting up early the next morning, I headed out to the town. After my conferences, just kind of enjoyed walking Times Square. Um, had a date with um, the Met, had to walk through Central Park to get there. But the Met has evening hours on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, open to like 9, 9.30. So I spent an evening by myself wandering around the not so full galleries around the Met, taking some time to look in little nooks and crannies that I'd never seen before. Tucked away in the corner of the Met is um, well, all sorts of really fun, interesting things. Here's a gallery of Greek pottery. One of my favorite spots in this museum are the Impressionist and Pre-Impressionist and Post-Impressionist galleries. Here's uh, some Manet when he's doing Spanish painting. Also, all sorts of Impressionist art in these galleries. There's some Renoir, some Degas hanging the walls. You can see there's another Renoir, the girls at the piano, and some Monet's hanging out. Um, man, you can just get art ADHD in this museum if you're not too careful. If you explore enough, you find these undiscovered little pieces like this horse sculpture as well as some other modern art and a Jackson Pollock, which I never understood, but it was kind of fun to see. Plenty of time to putter around. I found this. This is the study collection. It's a collection of Greek, 
Roman and Etruscan art. Just kind of chock-a-block full of cabinets of all sorts of interesting examples of pottery and glass and little bronze sculptures and other remnants from archaeological excavations of the ancient world. Like I said, Roman. Here's some Roman glass right here. Pretty amazing how modern Roman glass looks. And of course, the downstairs of the Met and the Ancient Collections has all sorts of Roman and Greek um, statuary. But I was really surprised to see these frescoes from a villa just outside of Pompeii, kind of covered in the same uh, eruption of Vesuvius that um, kind of encapsulated Pompeii, but they've actually managed to capture these frescoes from Pompeii. The evenings in the Met always have some music, so here's an Indian band playing. Having had a wonderful evening, I kind of wandered my way around some of the galleries of interior decoration. I don't always get it, but I always find a couple interesting objects to look at. It's on my way to my favorite part of this museum, the Arms and Armor Collection. Man, they've got a great collection of armor, jousting outfits, and armor for horses, as well as Japanese swords and really early firearms and swords. So kind of fun. You know, Five-year-old loves that area. And of course, the Sackler Gallery, where they have a Roman-era Egyptian temple recreated there. Kind of beautiful. Area. And then the next day, went to work and then took the afternoon off to go to the Met in the rain. So yeah, Met Day Part 2. Next day, went back to the Met to wander the Egyptian gallery some more, take some time looking at the statuary um, and the artifacts they have in this gallery. Once again, even this just section of the museum is worth the visit alone. One of the things I love are these just chock full cabinets of Egyptian relics. Here's some scarabs and scaraboid amulets as well as small sculptures. This is one of my favorite sarcophagus because it's kind of cartoony. And of course there's plenty of mummies and various sarcophagi to look at. Some of them are wood, some of them are cartouche. Uh, some of them are amazing pristine shape. Others are a little damaged, but kind of fun to peruse the, the massive collection of Egyptian artifacts they have here. It's a rainy day in New York, so we weren't in a hurry to go outside and get out of the, the museum anytime, so we decided to go back and revisit the uh, ancient artifacts from ancient Greek and Roman era. Here we see some of the sculpture area on the lower floor. Some beautiful um, reproductions of Greek pieces as well as a great collection of Roman artifacts like these terracotta lamps. Thought with back-to-back -back art visits, headed back to the hotel lounge, taking a look over Times Square in the rain. Had a nice little adult beverage while well, just hung out and enjoyed the atmosphere. Um, we got a little hungry, kind of went out for a little snack. I walked back in a nice rain. Next morning we got up to explore um, more of Uptown, all the way down to downtown. So we started walking out to Times Square and headed out to explore um, kind of where we were in the, the town and then work our way down Fifth Avenue to some of the sites that way. Times Square is a massive humanity as an understatement. This area is full of all sorts of tourists. I don't think many local New Yorkers actually spend any time down here. It's full of all sorts of chain restaurants that are way overpriced. This is a spectacle with these giant TV screens. It's kind of worth visiting once or twice, but since my hotel was here, I found myself walking through this area quite a bit, um, but not in the Too far away from Times Square, you can wander down to Radio City Music Hall, um, the home of those Rock Cats. Kind of a fun place to do. There it is on the side corner. There. Well, it is still technically winter in February. Um, we headed to Rockefeller Plaza to check out the famous ice skating rink. One of the things that the camera doesn't capture is how tiny this ice skating rink is. It does not appear to be as ginormous as it is in the movies, but it is a cool little area to check out for the people um, just enjoying ice skating.
past the Empire State Building, we made our way down to the Flatiron Building. Um, kind of an iconic New York architectural feature. Never been there before. And then we hopped on the train and headed down to Little Italy and Chinatown on Lower Manhattan. walked around Little Italy and then finally found our way right. to the neighborhood of Chinatown. It really does remind me of some of the cities I've been in Asia. Um, lots of little groceries and herbal remedy shops and restaurants. We ended up grabbing ourselves a banh mi sandwich and headed out to walk the Manhattan Bridge. There's the Manhattan Bridge and the cool thing about the Manhattan Bridge is you get a nice view of Lower Manhattan but also of the Brooklyn Bridge in the distance. So we kind of putted around on the bridge. It was a beautiful sunny day. It was getting warm. Lots of people were out running and jogging. But we wandered around Chinatown a little bit more before we headed back uptown to um, 72nd Avenue or 72nd Street, I believe it was, uh, to the subway and got ourselves oh, an amazing pastrami sandwich and pastrami queen. I promised the girls I'd do a run in Central Park. So here I am doing a 5K run in Central Park. It was a glorious early spring day. Everybody was out. It's a great run. I really enjoyed myself. Feeling completely famished, I head out to Gray's Papaya, Bourdain hangout of sorts. Got two hot dogs and a papaya drink to restore myself after a run. And man, I don't know if you can have a recovery hot dog, but I sure as heck did. Week in New York was ending, so I had one last old fashioned in the hotel lounge over Times Square before I went to bed and headed home the next day. Cab, I headed back to LaGuardia and popped into the MX lounge. Had a nice little glass of rose wine while I checked my email, caught up on journaling. And caught my flight down to the end of the corridor. Walking down there, it's a beautiful airport, nice, efficient, not too crowded, all the things you need. Got on the plane, and soon enough, I was on my way home.